Hi Taurus, this is Jeffrey, this is Ripe Color, and this is your reading for the week of July 4th through the 11th, happy July 4th, fun, 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 on July 4th, eat a hot dog, I love hot dogs, they're so bad for you, but in the summer I always like blow myself up, or two, or three, <laughs> on a potato roll. Mm. You know what's great on a hot dog? There are a couple of things that are great on hot dogs, actually. Coleslaw. Coleslaw on a hot dog is genius. That's one thing. The other thing that's really good on a hot dog, especially if you grill them, I don't know if telling you this, it's like dreamy hot dogs, is diced raw onion. <gasps> diced raw onion on a hot dog. Not the cooked onion. The cooked onions are good too. Those aren't bad. Diced raw onion with like deep some Dijon. Fantastic. That's why hot dogs are good because it's like you can put anything on it. You know, when you're a kid, it's like I only want ketchup and I like mustard. But you know, as you get older, you know, your tastes develop in a different way. You like this and you like that. Relish is good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's summertime. Okay. One, two, three. I don't know why I went off on that. Uh, place. Okay, Taurus, let's see what's up. All right. The Fool, the Five of Pentacles. Hmm. And the Two of Wands. I hate when I sit. In not, I, when I get really comfortable, I sit, you know, like kind of low down on the chair. I'm not really sitting up straight. <laughs> um, the fool. So the fool can either be a fool or um, one who's curious, who's uh, open, enthusiastic, optimistic, you know open to new opportunities, new, you know, could be that. Then we get the five. And it's funny, right before the reading, I kept on get, hearing five, five, five. Because yeah, I, some of you know, I read the, uh, I read the signs in different orders every week and you're the fifth sign this week. And um, five is also the number of the Hierophant, which is your card. Five is also really the number of Venus, who's your ruler. And I don't know why I'm getting a draw to five. But five is about change. So this reading can kind of go either way. So five is about change. They're out in the cold, right? And, and a change needs to happen. It's as simple as that. So they have a choice basically here. Do they stay out in the cold, right? Or do they go into the warmth, right? There, there's, a, there's a choice here, because this is not a happy card, obviously. Um, and then you have choices yet again. And you have choices yet again. Do I do what I've done before? Or do I do something new that's bigger? I get the hangman, so that ain't gonna and get one more. Okay. Okay, Doris, this is going to be a very, this might be quite the trying little week. Just give me a little heads up. All right, so we begin with the fool, right? So the fool, he's seeing things through rose colored glasses. And, you know, the reality may be, you know, not as cheery as you think it is. And then you have some sort of plan, but I, I feel like this plan that you have is sort of dreamy, sort of not realistic, sort of like,
you're jumping on this would be jumping off into nowhere right and it's this dreamy oh la 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 okay then you get the hangman the hangman's a fascinating card the hangman is really about taking this deep deep self-reflective look at oneself and seeing things from all angles not just from the angle that you want to see things from right because he can be very too idealistic, right? So I think he needs to take a really long, hard look inside and look at things from like a different perspective, from a, from a, a more spiritual perspective, from a, a sense of, um, let me sit and look at this more uh, realistically, more, almost from the outside looking in, almost from the outside looking in, like put yourself in a position. Sometimes, you know, we want to believe what we want to believe and then we act on our beliefs, blah, 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 fine. And then, you know, sometimes, you know, yeah, I have to step out of myself and I'd say, what would I say to a friend? If a friend told me this situation and I, it was really my friend and I wanted to tell them the truth, right? Not just someone around, oh, you look great. They look great. <laughs> and they have like you know, toilet paper off their shoe. Oh yeah, you look great. Yeah, let's go to the party, come on. <laughs> Who's your friend with the toilet paper on their shoe? Anyway, um, what would your friend say? What would somebody outside of yourself say? It's like, what do they think about this situation? How do they, see what I'm saying? And I think through that, you might get in touch with an uncomfortable truth that would make you a little bit um, worried, but it's, look, unless you're on a solid foundation of the truth, then you really don't know what to do. If you're living in la-la land, if you're living in this, in this dreamscape of your head of, Oh, you know, I'm going to win the lottery and I don't even need to buy a ticket. I was just reading this thing last night online. What did it say? That, I don't know, it was about, you know, uh, statistics and percentages. Your chance of winning the lottery is so slim. It's like you can get hit by lightning. You get eaten by a whale. You can get, it's like, eaten by a whale. I don't, I live inland, you know. You still have more of a chance living inland, never having seen the sea of getting eaten by a whale than you do winning the lottery. You know what I'm saying? Not that I don't play sometimes. On occasion, I play, you know, when the, when the number is like super high, which is actually a worse, a worse chance. It's like, you know, it's 400 million. It's like, yeah, I'll throw, I'll throw a dollar or two in, you know. And then you say to your friends, well, when I win the $400 million, I'm never going to talk to you again. <laughs> I think in order to, to like move out of the cold and, and move into the warmth of spirit, you need to go in and, and really discover um, some truths and uncover some truths that you haven't been able or willing to look at. That's what I get. That's what I get. I, you know, I wish I had a really lovely light reading for you, but I don't. This is the reading that I have for you. Um, the, the really, really, really important thing that I really glean from this, so this is, for me, this is a truth that can't be seen. This is a willing self-sacrifice. He was not put on the tree. He put himself on the tree. He put himself on the tree to gain inner wisdom. And there's a certain amount of sacrifice. You know, maybe he had to sacrifice his ego. Maybe he had to sacrifice 
this um, way of looking at himself or this, uh, this uh, facade he's putting on or he has put on saying, I don't really know what I'm doing. And I need like kind of spiritual help. I need to go deeper into my soul to really figure out what's going on here. I, you know, I, I, I can't play this game anymore. Because he, you know, I usually read this as a very positive card, but with all these other cards, it just doesn't feel like it this week. So look, we all have to go through periods of self-reflection, of self-assessment, of, uh, you know, going deep within and seeing it's like, oh, what's really going on here? And I feel like it's your opportunity to do that. I mean, the good news is, is that I think you're going to get to the truth. And look, if you know the truth, it's like, well, this is actually how much I owe, right? Or, uh, you know, this is what I can do to better my situation. You know, it might not be the answer that you want to hear, but, it, you know, sometimes it's the answer that you need to hear. So it, it might be, a, a, well, I, I think it's going to be a muscle building week, let's say that, a spiritual muscle building. That's what I've got for you. So my job is to interpret the cards. You know, I, I, I wish, and you know, I'm overall a very optimistic reader. And, you know, I would love to, you know, give everyone da da da, but, you know, there are moments that it's like, oh, I you know. Maybe I need to tend to the garden. Blessings to you. You're very strong and you're very stubborn. So you're going to get through it. So it's not like you're one of these, uh, you know, signs. It's like, it's like once you make that decision to, to do that and to really discover the truth, you will discover the truth that you won't be distracted from it. So you have what it takes, that determination, that, that move forward momentum. So you'll be fine. You're like, yeah, will it be uncomfortable? Yeah. So, well, sometimes things are uncomfortable. But it passes. Everything passes. Blessings. <laughs>